What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day today. Now I realize that I have not made a video in a few days and honestly there really hasn't been much to talk about. However, today I think it's time that we are due for an update. As you can see, Bitcoin is literally barely moving in this extremely tight range. It is essentially coiling up like a spring ready for a big, big, big move. Now I'm going to tell you why I am actually anticipating a positive Q4 to this year, I do think we are going to end up seeing a bit of a Santa Claus rally, and I do think we are going to be having a higher Bitcoin price by the end of this year than we do at the time of making this video. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that the bear market is completely over, but as you guys can see right here, we are unbelievably tight on these Bollinger Bands. In fact, the Bollinger Bands have curved down even tighter, the tightest that we have seen it since if we come all the way back here, the last time we saw it this tight was back here in October and November of 2020. And I know we've been talking about this for a while, but that's the point. It is boring. It's going sideways. It's trying to shake people out of the market. But I'm telling you, there is going to be a massive move. And there's something else I want to talk about. I want to discuss the fact that the tides may actually finally be turning for Bitcoin. There is some compelling data that suggests that Bitcoin is slowly becoming a safe haven asset. And I'm going to show you exactly why this is happening. We've been speculating about Bitcoin you know, being gold 2.0 for a while, well, it could finally be that time and why the dollar is looking quite bleak and inevitably the Fed is going to pivot. So Bitcoin is actually perfectly on track and I'm going to show you that. I'm going to look at this chart right here and we're going to show you a few others comparing it to the four-year cycle, looking where we are right now. And I know everyone is calling for doom and gloom saying that, oh, this time is different. You know, this time right here is different than this time right here is different than this time right here. You know, we've never seen Bitcoin in a stock bear market situation? Sure. All sounds like compelling arguments, but in today's video, I'm going to show you why Bitcoin is definitely on track, potentially even to become the world reserve currency in our lifetime. So lots of big topics to talk about, but obviously, more specifically, I want to go over the very short-term targets because I am anticipating a big move, and I do think that this could be a tradable event. So if all that sounds good to you, you know what to do. If you're not subscribed, definitely consider it. Let's dive in. Let's have a look at what we have going on in this chart. Now, as we were talking about with this de uh, descending triangle, most people are anticipating this to have a breakdown, right? Now, I spoke about in my video a few days ago how there is a possibility of some kind of a fake out to the downside, but I expect that even if we do have a fake out this week or next week, come down here, I think we're going to inevitably end up having a big, big move to the upside. I think we're going to break through some of these key levels, and I think that Bitcoin is minimally going to attempt to retest around $25,000. Now, this doesn't mean it's going to happen overnight, but I do think we're going to have somewhat of a volatile move soon. Now, someone in the comments the other day had actually mentioned like, oh, what happens if it goes outside of this triangle? Do you just keep extending the line? Well, here's the situation, guys. If we do look at the linear right here, we are in fact out of the triangle. You can see right here, we actually have broken out of it, right? We are out of it. We have retested it and we haven't fallen any lower. Now, the interesting thing is if we change this to the logarithmic chart, which some people do tend to prefer this over the long term course, then you will see actually what we have is a little bit more room to go. But this is it. There's no other way I can extend this anymore. So if we do look at this linear trend, right? So this is this trend, uh, excuse me, the logarithmic trend right here, then in that sense, technically speaking, yes. Okay, Bitcoin could have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, maybe two more weeks, but I just don't see that happening. It is very, very, very rare that in Bitcoin, we ever get to the absolute end of a move, I would anticipate that happening sooner than later. So forget the triangle, forget the pattern. What is the level that we're looking for? It has been the same level we've been looking at since all the way back here when we had what I believe to be the capitulation and bottom that we've had thus far back here on June uh, 18th of this year. And you could see the significance of this level right here, right? We have that support. We have the support here. And then look at all this resistance that it's been acting as all this resistance, right? We come up, fake out, come back down. The level that we are looking to break is 19,457. And considering we are literally at the end of this move, I would say that if Bitcoin can break above this level right here, this red line, this very, very important level of around 19,457, I think we will very easily slice through 
all of these levels like butter, kind of like we did right here where we had this massive pump, right? I think we could easily end up coming back minimally, minimally to this range of around 22,475. So I'm just saying right now, okay, we could have that fake out to the downside, fair enough, but I do think that will be bought back up and I think we are going to see Bitcoin rally towards the end of the year. We're extremely oversold on all conditions. And what I also wanted to point out was if we have a look at this super guppy, remember we talked about every single time we have, and obviously once you go into the green, you guys know that means massive bull run. We usually go on a bull run pretty much forever with the exception of this COVID crash where we dipped back into the gray. This was in fact a, uh, a black swan event right here. But as you guys can see, what happens, and this is obviously just a combination of moving averages, but once we go right here from this blue and that blue goes into the neutral, that means that the bottom has been in. Now, of course, there was this fake out here, and this is what I was talking about. We had this one day where we fell 30%. Everybody thought that it was over, and we instantly got bought back up. Now, going over here, could that happen again? We are putting in the typical W pattern, right? Very bullish. Now, would, could you have that fake out to the low side, 30% crash in a day, in a week, only to then resume to the upside? Well, we've seen it happen before. Why couldn't it happen again? But what do we also notice? Every single time we go into these red zones, that means that we are essentially at the tail end of the bear market, right? Now, it doesn't mean that we're just gonna instantly go back up, right? You could see right here from the time that we actually entered the red uh, all the way to the end, that was about, uh, hold on guys, one second. Let me uh, zoom back in here. If we actually just take our measurement tool, that was about, let's see, that was 210 days, right? But at that point, we did not go any lower except for this one fake out, and that was the you know tail end of the bear market. Same thing right here, right? As soon as we went into this, what happened? We went for about another, uh, this was only 63 days, right? And then boom, that was the end of it. So how long have we been in this thus far? Well, if we take it from when we've had the red to now, we've officially been in here for 70 days. So at this point, that would pretty much put us on track with this right here. Obviously back here, we have you know, a little bit more time to go, about double that time to go. But nevertheless, guys, you can see that even if you don't think the bottom is in, even if you think we are going to go lower, there's absolutely no denying that every single time we have ever been in this area, it has been a golden pocket buy zone for Bitcoin, right? And actually, I'm going to be on the Altcoin Daily channel tomorrow talking about this. So if you guys watch Altcoin Daily, make sure you check it out. Go check out that video. Um, we're going to be talking about a lot of different things. Some of them I am going to be touching on in this video today. But specifically what I wanted to talk about is how Bitcoin could potentially be starting to become that safe haven asset. It's something we've talked about for a while. We've talked about it as a hedge against inflation. And, you know, people may be saying right now, oh, well, how's it a hedge against inflation? Look what it's doing. It's falling hard. Right. But the Fed is raising rates. They're trying to fight inflation. If we actually look at the inflation in the 13 years that Bitcoin has been alive for it actually has been doing what it's supposed to do. But anyway, moving on to this. So we have uh, Alkish Shah and Andrew Moss of Bank of America Securities saying in a recent report that the world's largest cryptocurrency, meaning Bitcoin, now had a high correlation with gold prices, suggesting it is being used as a hedge against wider market uncertainty. So at the start of September, the relationship between gold and Bitcoin once again turned positive, And in early October, the correlation reached its highest point in a year. A decelerating positive correlation with the S&P 500 and QQQ and a rapidly rising correlation with gold indicate that investors may view Bitcoin as a relative safe haven as macro uncertainty continues and a market bottom remains to be seen. Now, you might be saying, well, this is crazy. This is hopium. People are not flocking to Bitcoin. Well, if you put Bitcoin in US dollars, then yes, Bitcoin is down because the dollar is strengthening. But also, the dollar is strengthening at such a rapid rate that it's devaluing these other currencies. And it's definitely starting to piss off a lot of these countries, including the uh, you know, UN specifically, and I'm going to get to this in a minute, the new money that will destroy the US dollar. This is from the BRICS. We're going to get to this in a minute, but let's just, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's go back and talk about what we had uh, Kevin O'Leary uh, discussing. Now, remember he was talking about the Stablecoin Transparency Act. He said this is a very simple act in nature, which is why it may pass. It's being supported by both parties, and the reason that's the case is that it makes effectively the US dollar the default payment system worldwide, which everyone could could get behind. Even though it has nothing to do with Bitcoin, 
that will be the first regulator, uh, regulation passed by the U.S. regulators. And I would argue you would want to be long Bitcoin going into that outcome. He also talks about the sovereign wealth funds. We've spoke about this recently, but he goes on to say, all the funds that he works with as an indexer have zero position in crypto of any kind. So everyone says, oh, all the institutions are in, all the big money is in. We had Elon Musk and Tesla. Guys, that's just the tip of the iceberg. They said when they get in, they're going to want the granddaddy, which is Bitcoin. They're willing to put in 50 basis points up to 1% in Bitcoin with their compliance department when it allows them to, but that won't happen until the SEC rules on it as a commodity or a security, which let's be honest, we already know they've hinted at Bitcoin as being a commodity. So he says, here's the upside. 50 basis points in the sovereign wealth and pension funds is a trillion dollars of buying. So you have to be voting and cheering on regulation. You put a trillion dollars into Bitcoin. That's when you see it at 60,000 or $100,000 valuations. And those funds don't care. Once they index it, there will be an automatic bid when it dips below the 50 BPS they've decided to own and they sell into strength. So there's a really, really liquid market about to happen. And that is very optimistic for Bitcoin, not pessimistic. And I personally believe the longer we see this drag on, the more you are going to see these sovereign, you know, potential wealth funds, these countries, you know, eventually we're going to have an acting president that's going to own some Bitcoin. It's all just a matter of time, right? We know that gold is manipulated. Uh, a lot of these countries are owning gold. I think Bitcoin could be that next standard to look forward to. So what I wanted to talk about, and this is also what I, you know, spoke about with Altcoin Daily, is, you know, a lot of people are saying this time is different. If you actually just look at what's going on, it's not that different. Based on the trajectory of past downturns, bear markets that were associated with a recession, and that, which we can all agree we are in a recession, on average, you could see last about 18 months, right? So it wouldn't be unusual for this one to go well into 2023. Now, if we have a look at what they've been doing with the rates, obviously it's been crashing the other currencies um, against the dollar. Definitely worse if you're in a third world country, which also, by the way, makes Bitcoin look quite appetizing. But just having a look at this, and also just pointing out, guys, super quick, we still have not fallen below this lavender line, which is the 89 EMA, which literally every single time we've ever gone down to that level, including just recently this week, okay? It has been a perfect opportunity to long and buy. So obviously, if you guys do want to learn how to trade, I highly recommend that you guys check out the tutorial popping up above right here, guys. There's over $16,000 in bonuses and they're running a new rewards program. And if you guys want, you can check that out below in the description, in the pinned comment, take advantage of that. But getting back to Bitcoin right here, you could see that I've already put a, a dotted line at about where that would say that we've ended for the you know, S&P, right? So that doesn't mean that the S&P couldn't come lower, but it does mean that it would have a 20% reversal at around June 23rd. This is based on history. This is based on every single stock market, bull and bear market, literally dating back to 1926. So when you say this time is different, well, okay, we had a war, right? In, in 19, we, we had the World War II in the 40s. We had the Great Depression in the 30s. We had uh, Paul Volcker in the late 70s and 80s. Every single one of those instances was the catastrophic end of the world. And guess what? We continue to the upside. In fact, stocks are 72% going to the upside. Historically, bear markets tend to be much shorter than bull markets. But looking at here, these three lines represent the Bitcoin having, right? So this, this dotted line right here represents where we should be having the reversal potentially next year sometime in June for traditional stocks. Now, if we have a look at every single time that Bitcoin, you know, is at the having, okay, here's the having right there. Here's a halving right there. We can even go back to this halving right here. What do we notice? In every single instance, Bitcoin has taken, you know, roughly anywhere between a 90% to 75% dip. We also note that we are always below the all-time high, okay? Which means that by April 24th of 2020, uh, April 1st of 2024, we should technically still not be higher than the all-time high. And if we were to come down to these levels, it would literally put us exactly where we've always been every single time. Nothing has actually changed. The four-year cycle is actually still intact, okay? Now, let's talk about reasons why the Fed might pivot. I don't know why they just, I guess I have a limited access to this chart, but pretty much up here, what I was looking at was the distribution of countries with large stock markets. This big bar right here, even though they're not showing it, they want me to sign up or something, but basically this is about 60%. So that means that 60% of you know these countries, which are 
you know, for-profit co country uh, companies are essentially U.S. Now, do you think that they're going to actually continue to crash the markets? Well, you know what? Actually, this time Powell says they just might be interested in doing that, right? So on the off chance that the Fed is willing to just completely destroy the markets, I want to show you something else. So the U.S. national debt even though we're still raising rates, even though we're having less money borrowing and we're seeing you know, the bond market crash, what is it doing? It's going up. You see this number very clearly. The U.S. national debt is going up. However, if we come over here and we look at the U.S. federal tax revenue, what is this number doing? This number is going down. You can see it going down live in front of our eyes. This means that if unemployment does end up going up, which right now it's not, so the Fed has no reason to actually pivot, right? But if it does continue... They're going to continue to lose, to lose tax revenue because they're not going to be getting any income tax from all of these people that are out of jobs. And on top of it, if they continue to crash the markets, and especially the 60%, which is mostly for-profit U.S. companies, well, then they're also not going to get tax revenue. So how does the government plan on making money? Well, we could pivot. We could print, Right. Inevitably, it seems like that may be the case. However, might it be too late at that point? Because as you can see right here, we have Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, known as the BRICS countries, okay, having formed an alliance to overtake the U.S. dollar as the new global reserve currency. Now, they're saying that they may be looking to make a basket of currencies. Maybe they'll tie it into gold. Will they eventually look to Bitcoin? Well, that's to be seen. I don't know if these uh, countries will. I think smaller countries will the same way that we've seen El Salvador going on the Bitcoin standard. But if you look at these guys, they're going to be the dominant suppliers of manufactured goods, services, and raw materials estimated by around 2050. You can see the statistics here. 42% of the world population, 23% of the world's GDP, 30% of the world's territory, 18% of global trade. They also have 26% of oil, 40% of corn, and 46% of wheat, not to mention a combined population of 3.2 billion people. So Putin says the issue of creating an international reserve currency based on a basket of currencies of our country is being worked out. Now, this is probably going to be in the form of a CBDC of some form, but essentially what this is saying is that the dollar is potentially losing its place as the world reserve currency, right? Most of these guys only last about 100 years in power, and we are pretty much sitting right at that precipice right now. And if you don't think that people are interested in cryptocurrencies and you think it's only just for speculation or for these smaller countries, well, we have the big four accounting firm, KPMG and Technology and Financial Services Company, Aspen Digital, found that family offices and high net worth individuals in Hong Kong and Singapore have actually embraced the digital asset class. The report they produce is based on a survey of 30 of these high net worth individuals and family offices. And you can see in the chart right here, they say despite the volatility in the digital asset market in the past two years, family offices and high net worth individuals are keen to invest in the sector. The survey found that 92% of respondents were interested in digital assets with 58% of them already investing and 38% of them planning to do so. This was literally taken just this year in the second quarter. And we already had major decline in the prices. So you are going to see people beginning to flock to Bitcoin as a safe haven asset. It's already starting. We saw it with the British pound sterling, right? We saw the highest inflows ever, ever into Bitcoin at the same time that we saw one of the steepest falls for it ever, right? So having a look at this ultimate falling wedge, this is a bullish pattern. I cannot drill that into your guy's head enough. This is a macro bullish pattern. This doesn't mean we can't come down here and retest some of these scary levels, retest this area around the previous, um, you know, close on the weekly back here in 2018, right? Possible. I do think it would be short-lived. Inevitably, falling wedges do break out to the upside. When they break out, they break out extremely violently. And whether that does happen now or leading sometime into, you know, the having, as I showed you guys, we are on track Nothing has changed. And something else, too, that I wanted to just show you guys really quick. If you, I hope you guys actually stayed to the end of this. If you guys actually look at what we've done each time, just to point this out, look at the similarities. Let me actually go to the weekly. Look at the similarities between all of these moves right here, guys. So we have these crazy, crazy shakeouts, right? We have these moves, right, where we form these triangles, right? And then we have these break out to the downsides, 50%, right? Same thing right here, right? We're forming this triangle, same thing right here. Look what happens when we break from the level to the bottom side. 
This was about a 50%. What did we do right here, guys? Same, same exact situation, right? You could argue that we had some type of formation, a little bit different, rounded top, right? D uh, double, double top, something we never really saw for Bitcoin. But if we come from here to the bottom, 44%, okay? So that's not the 50%. So if you think we have to go the full 50%, where would the full 50% take us? That would take us about down to around that 16K level, which, oh my goodness, perfectly coincides with this previous uh, weekly close that we had back here. So could we go down to 16? It's possible. I do think it would be short-lived or it could. we could have already had the drop, right? This could have been the drop the same way that, you know, this was the drop and this was the drop and this was the drop. History looks like it's repeating itself, my friends, and I wouldn't want to be on the wrong side of history. So that being said, guys, hope you're having a ultimately safe and awesome day today. I am very bullish on Bitcoin in the long term. Short term, we could get a little bit of turbulence, but I definitely think that we are going to see the Fed start to back down, possibly not this uh, meeting, Maybe in December, definitely by the beginning of next year, I think they'll leave the rates pretty much flat for about a year, and then I think they'll start to reverse, and all of that would coincide perfectly, exactly, with the halving. Bitcoin is perfectly on track to break 70K, um, you know, sometime, you know, around here in uh, 2025. And yeah, I think we're perfectly on track. I think now's an excellent time for accumulation, not financial advice. And ultimately, that is it for me for the end of the day. So thank you so much. You guys rock. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, get subscribed if you're not. And of course, if you do want to trade, make sure that you watch these videos popping up right here, right now. That's it for me. Until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out.